so good morning to everyone present here i welcome all the audience on this platform conducted by satwa charitable sanstha on the eve of dr samuel hanuman's 267th birth anniversary mm-hmm. pandemic has taught us about crisis and emergency and application of homeopathy in acute distressing diseases needs expertise in clinical bedside medicine so let's talk what satwa works that is clinical experience of hospital homeopathy by beginners for the beginners the reason of this webinar is to motivate the youngsters for practicing homeopathy by sharing the experience witnessed by young doctors on the cases treated in ipd setup beginners means young doctors who require encouragement and guidance just like a lighthouse at the sea So today we have with us our very own speakers, Dr. Sheetal Jai Singh and Dr. Sadhna Kaushal. We have with us a team of knowledgeable and experienced doctors, Dr. Tarul Jadhav, Dr. Kanika Sabarwal, Dr. Vidya Arunachalam, who will guide us by a panel discussion. We have with us Dr. Rakesh Gupta, the founder of Satwa Charitable Sansa, who will be the moderator for today's event. So let us begin with our first presenter for today Dr Sadhna Kaushal who had given her dedicated contribution during covid times at MISCO she had also as a part of satwa charitable sansta helped in our self distribution program at the red flag areas of covid so let us present Dr Sadhna Kaushal <laughs> hello hello good 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 morning everyone so myself dr sadhna kaushal so today i am going to present you the case which was seen at our ipd the mumbai devi homeopathy hospital okay so i will start with the screen sharing okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, Ruchi, can you just let me know if it is working fine? Yes, Adna, it's fine. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's start. So this is the case where we had a lot of contribution from Dr. Manisha, and it was under Dr. Rakesh sir. So here there was a case of 22 year young female patient who arrived to hospital at night with a complain of high grade fever with constant chills which was there since 4 days and the chills were aggravated in afternoon she also had complaints of head pain severe leg pain and back pain which were better by pressure she also complained of abdominal pain which was aggravated after vomiting she had constant nausea and vomiting which was aggravated at least food and drink and patient came into the state of dehydration when she arrived at hospital she had severe weakness she had to be supported by her uh, mom at the hospital for walking so on arrival when we checked her spo2 was normal that it was 99 her hgt was 78 but her blood pressure was 80 by 60 which showed that she was into hypotension also the fever was 102 rest all her vitals were okay but she had epigastric tenderness so now what do we do what is the action plan in this case she has come to our hospital now we need to evaluate does she requires admission if she needs admission then why so as we can see in this case the patient has hypotension and she is into constant state of hypotension along with dehydration also there is constant vomiting with non retention of food and fluid and there is high grade continuous fever so keeping all these things in mind we need to see what can be the complication or prognosis in this case because that is going to help us if this patient requires admission or if we can give her opd based treatment so now as there was continuous hypotension so she can land up into pre renal failure so while treating this case we need to keep in mind that she should not land up into pre renal failure then as there was continuous vomiting and there was non retention of food and fluid so it can lead to hyponatremia 
which can further lead into cerebral edema. If there is constant hyponatremia, it can lead to cerebral edema and further complications. So now we know that this patient needs IPD admission for continuous monitoring of hypotension as well as to see that she doesn't end up into further complications. So now here is the role of IPD that we can monitor our patient continuously. So now we admitted her in our hospital and as a protocol RAT and RT-PCR was done which was negative. Her CBC showed platelet count of 82,000 and WBC count of 2400. So there was anemia, leukopenia and thrombocytopenia. So what are the differential diagnosis in this case that we have? It is like malaria, typhoid, dengue or also there can be leptospirosis. So we went ahead with further investigation. We showed that the MP was negative, Vidal was negative, dengue NS1 antigen was positive. Now to know the inflammatory status of our patient, we did CRP which was 1.5. So she is okay within the range. Then her electrolyte showed that she is into the state of hyponatremia. Now what is the homeopathic approach to this case? We know that the uh, patient has fever, she is into hyponatremia, she is into dehydration. But now what? How we are going to treat her with our homeopathic medicine? So the most important thing in this case is First, we need to see why this person got ill. She was a healthy person and all of a sudden why she landed up into this state. So, when we went back into the history from her mom, we got to know that there was a situation happening in her family. There was continuous dispute going on between patient, brother and his wife. It was about the divorce. So, for settlement, patient's mom give 3 lakhs rupees to the brother's wife by selling all the gold, jewelry and savings which she kept for patient's future. So now this was the triggering situation in our case. Patient was very disappointed, uh, disappointed about the situation. She had a lot of grief of losing this money. When she came that time also, she was in the continuous state of anger and anxiety. There's a lot of anxiety about her future, that what will happen, how she is going to do, because that saving was kept for her. So that was the main reason that she was very anxious. Also, there was a lot of anger. And there was constant lamenting about it. Like even for her mother was trying to make her understand. She said that I was telling her that it's okay. That is the main thing that she needs to focus. But patient was not in the state to understand that situation. So this was the whole thing that happened. Now when we look further into the history, as a person, she is the one who cannot tolerate contradiction and she desires company. That too like one should be there with her without disturbing her. That she wanted her mother around, but she should just listen to her what she is saying. There was also increased uh, thirst for sips of water, and which is a common thing which is seen in dehydration. Then the tongue had thick white coating. Thermally, the patient was chilly, and she is a known case of thalassemia minor. So now we know that as dengue NS1 antigen is positive, it's a classical case of dengue. So, we know it is caused by flavivirus and there are four serotypes. So, a person get, can get dengue four times in a lifetime. Okay, so we know that after the infected mosquito bites the human, so there is extensive period of about 8 to 10 days. So, about dengue, we all know it can present as asymptomatic or a symptomatic form. In a symptomatic form, either it can be undifferentiated dengue fever or the classical dengue fever or either it can go into dengue shock syndrome. So for classical dengue fever, we know it has high fever which 
skills with lot of retro orbital and muscular joint pain head pain rashes and lot of weakness in dengue shock syndrome and in dengue hemorrhagic fever we know if there is continuous high grade fever with increasing thrombocytopenia it will lead to increased capillary permeability which leads to plasma leakage causing lot of effusion and edema like as in pleural effusion ascites hypoperfusion dic so now that is the critical phase because if patient is not handled into this situation it can further go into dengue shock syndrome and if there are a typical findings of dengue then it can lead to expanded dengue syndrome and ultimately into death so now we know our patient has presented this way what's the clinical management of this case so okay we are going to give our homeopathic remedy but what else apart from that so in this case it is very important to maintain and look after what is the fluid balance of the patient either give orally or by ivf so here as patient has constant nausea and vomiting she required iv support we need to monitor her temperature and her vitals we need to see if there are any kind of capillary leakage or any kind of petechial rashes further and maybe if the patient deteriorates and there is severe thrombocytopenia platelet transfusion may be required and as we talked earlier we need to keep this complications in our mind about the pre renal failure and cerebral edema so now homeopathically the classification of disease that this is dynamic acute individual disease with psychosomatic causation so this is important over here in this case so when we read in aphorism number 73 we can see that dr hanneman has written about mental emotion and the like are exciting cause of such acute febrile affection in reality however they are generally only a transient explosion of light and sora so now this is also very important because this is the transient explosion of latent sora and patient will require a constitutional or a chronic similimum whatever you say we know there is a known case of blood disorder over here and there is sudden manifestation of the disease after the emotional disturbance and she is acutely dehydrated so we can come to that she is into tubercular myelin so now we need to see there was like wbc was decreased and there was this stress factor which happened prior to this illness so when we see in psychiatry what is the relation between stress and immunity so george selman has written about that emotional stress lead to decreased t lymphocytes keller's experiment also shows that when the rats were helpless to escape it lead to decreased lymphocytic count glasser also showed that before exam when the students were evaluated due to low stress they had normal count of wbc and during exam the same student has no count of wbc because of high stress so we can see that whenever there is stress there is release of cortisol and it leads to the immune cells get sensitized to cortisol leading to this regulated immune system causing increased susceptibility to the infection and the disease now the cortisol also leads to suppression of immunity leading to decrease wbc and decrease inflammation so here we saw that there was this major stress going around which caused low wbc count leading to immuno clearance insufficiency and ultimately causing the infestation of the disease so here we had one interesting thing in our case that there was continuous fever with chills but there was predominant git complaints there was continuous nausea and vomiting and usually dengue presents with typical of body pains retro orbital pains so here the most important thing was that there was git predominancy so this will help us in selection of our remedy 
So when we made totality, there was like we know elements from money losing, anxiety about future, lamenting. There is all the symptoms are aggravated during chill, like weakness, vomiting, and chill was mostly in the afternoon. And as a person, we know that she is a person who cannot tolerate contradiction. She has disturbed our to be, and she desires company. So when because we had lots of qualified mental physical general and characteristic particular we went ahead with kentian approach in this case so when we repertorize the whole symptom in acute as well as in a constitutional form considering her original nature we have a similar sets of remedies like nakswamika pulsatila arsenic so the differentials we have over here are Eupatorium, arsenic, and nasomica. So we all know that all the three remedies are very good for fever with chills. So eupatorium is very good remedy for boil and shaking chills. There are lots of body pain, bone pain, bone breaking pain. Also in GIT we can see that the vomiting is preceded by thirst. So there is lot of thirst in this remedy. Also patient has lot of sadness. They moan with pain, out of the pain, and very restless. And usually, the chills are mainly in the morning, around seven to nine pm. In arsenic, we can see that there is high temperature. There are like marked periodicity of the symptoms, especially the aggravation timing of twelve to two am and pm, along with severe chills. There are lot of weakness, which is out of proportion. and there is lot of nausea vomiting stomach is very irritable so least eating and drinking causes vomiting at mental level there is lot of fear of solitude there is great anguish and restlessness in nasomica we know that it is very good remedy for chills cold stage predominant and usually all the illness are associated with gastric symptom but the important is they want to vomit but they cannot vomit and they are very sensitive to all the impression and very irritable they want to be alone they are aggravated by least touch least noise there is hyper sensibility uh, sensitiveness and over impressionability so we can see that the most common remedy that is coming over here is most uh, this remedy is coming is arsenic also so when we see herring he mentioned about melancholy after financial losses cannot be consoled so this is the exact situation in our case so we know kent also mentions about the arsenic the prostration and uh, aggravation modality of 1 to 2 am and pm same when we cross check from other books like class we saw that there was lot of symptom about the abdominal complaint and also the mentally the patient were very angry and restless there was inconsolable anguish and constant lamentation so remedy selected was arsenical so here in this case the state of disposition of very important we know that in aphorism number 211 hanemann mentioned about the state of disposition of patient chiefly often chiefly determines the selection of homeopathic remedy so here there was grief anger and anxiety this was the disposition of patient when she presented so susceptibility was moderate to high depending on high symptom similarity there was uh, structural reversible changes were there and there was no suppression and high number of characteristic symptom so we went ahead with r sol 200 in first dilution 1 hourly so at night patient came at around 9 and we gave the medicine around 10 so that time she had fever she had nausea vomiting abdominal pain she was started on iv support rl and dns continuous so overnight patient didn't had fever next morning also there was no fever there was one episode of vomiting but rest her complaint was same so we uh, started with r sol 200 direct uh, pills one hourly but again she got a fever episode of 101.7 and there was severe chills along with increase in abdominal pain so the repetition was increased to 15 minutes and we went ahead with few investigations we showed that the platelet count was 1 lakh 17000 
USG showed there was mild pleural effusion along with peripotal edema and ascites. So total proteins were okay and SGPT SGOT was high. Uh, at around 4 pm we waited but there was same the fever was not decreased they she had same chills and rest all the symptoms were same so we increased the potency to 1m so ourselves 1m was given at 15 minutes interval after changing the potency to 1m fever started decreasing and all her symptoms started improving at night again she got a temperature of around 100.4 but back pain was better weakness was same but she was generally feeling better. So we continued same. So the next day she had no fever. There was one episode of vomiting. So we started her on uh, sips of water. And arsenic L1 and was continued one hourly. And uh, gradually all the symptoms decreased and patient didn't have fever on the uh, same day and also on the next day. And then on the fourth day she was discharged. So the platelet count improved to 3 lakhs 20,000. WBC count went up to 6,600. On 24, she was discharged as she was very stable and there was no complaint. And our cell 1M was given 4 hourly. Rest her investigation was done. We showed that it was within the normal limit. SGOTPT was a bit high, but she was on the stage of improvement. So she was discharged with r one and QDS along with tablet fall white and plenty of oral fluid to be taken. So we know that when the patient was admitted, second day she got fever, almost three spikes and after that the fever started decreasing and gradually she was improved overall within next two days. So now we know that the learning from this case is most important, the psychosomatic understanding of the disease. Also, the different presentation of the disease because dengue usually presents with the pain. And arsenic is very common in case of fever and GIT. But here we got to understand the different aspects of mind in arsenic and its correlation to the disease and the acute and constitutional totality. Also, the most important... I liked it. Uh, also, the fact that arsenic was obviously coming up as a remedy, supported it with various approaches, or something like that. Really like you have multiple ways of connecting and multiple ways of uh, coming to the same remedy. I loved it. And yes, uh, basically, it was a very nicely presented case. So, good Thank luck. you, ma'am. Best of luck. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. That's it from me. Thank you. So, thank you so much, Dr. Tarul. Uh, now, may I please request Dr. Kanika to please place her views? Uh, good morning, everyone. First and foremost, uh, at the outset, I would just like to say that uh, this is a very important day for all of us as homeopaths. So I'm glad to see students taking the opportunity on a Sunday instead of relaxing to indulge in academic activities. So kudos to all of you dedicated students who are here. And of course, big gratitude to Dr. Rakesh Gupta and his platform to arranging such uh, you know, sessions where uh, I would like to use the word junior doctors because Sadhna and uh, both of you have been my students. But it's great to see you presenting where you don't look junior, you don't look amateur. So Sadhna, uh, absolutely flawless case. I don't have much to add in terms of the case, but I just like to say a few points that one should have as a take home message from Sadhna's presentation. First and foremost, as Dr. Tarul rightly said, uh, the astute knowledge of scope of homeopathy and not only scope of homeopathy, but which case demands OPD and which case demands IPD management. So the most important step here that was taken in the case is understanding that this patient should be admitted to a hospital set up for management. But the more important facet being that just because a patient is in the hospital ward, it does not mean that your role as a homeopath ends there. And I think if that's something each one of us can learn from Dr. Rakesh Gupta, you know, it's a great win for us this Hanumanian day. So 
that is the most important take home message as far as my uh, interpretation of the case is concerned and the other point that i would just like to add is often when it comes to an acute disease we're very quick to just take the acute totality because patients have a lot of pqrs symptoms typically they are pathological sometimes they are pathognomic of the disease and you know we tend to restrict our totality to those medicines here the fact that the psychosomatic aspect was so strong even in precipitating an acute or uh, disease is extremely important that that was considered and paid heed to it's really helped in case solving so you know these are the few facets that one should take home and uh, again my compliments to you sadhna to rakesh sir of course so great great stuff sadhna now looking forward to the next case thank you thanks ruju over to you thank you so much ma'am uh I feel that there is some network issue and we are not able to contact Dr. Vidya. So uh, I may request Dr. Rakesh to please uh, place his views for this presentation. Hello, good morning to everyone. Uh, uh, wish everyone a World uh, Homeopathy Day and to on the eve of uh, Dr. Hanuman's birthday, birth anniversary. So uh, Satu has. wanted to do something different uh, compared to other people around so we thought of you know encouraging beginners by um, holding a presentations which are by young doctors who have just passed out and uh, by doing this we are trying to you know uh, enlighten that dream within the youngsters that you can make homeopathy as a career so that was what was my uh, aim in doing that and we want to continue this education further also in different way with the help of uh, different uh, doctors who are practicing with the help of dr tarol dr kanika dr vidya any many more uh, who are associated with us in some of the other way uh dr vidya couldn't join because on because of some technical issue but she has given uh, her uh, feedbacks and her observation on both the cases which i would like to share after uh, uh, dr sheetal uh, completes her presentation and my understanding of uh, treating this case in ipd as uh, i think majority of the point is covered by dr kanika and dr tarul jadav first is identifying the cause of the disease and understanding the pace of the disease if you are accurately assess the pace of the disease means the speed in which the uh, state of susceptibility is uh, uh projecting the symptoms and how the clinically patient is behaving if you are able to understand this thing you will definitely be able to choose whether you want to treat this patient on ipd basis or opd basis another thing which i would like to uh, tell all of you is understanding the state of vitality of the individual there is no point in whipping the tired horse means if a person is exhausted debilitated uh, with the state of vitality in context to the vital parameters of the body and even if you give right homeopathic simulimum the patient may not respond so this concept is quite a uh, very very similar to a suspended animation concept you know so suspended animation there is a hemodynamic compromise cardio respiratory compromise but in cases where there is debilitation there is a vitality which is compromised and if you don't give a support in form of hydration the patient may not respond to the well selected remedy and there is loss of patience patients on the on the behalf of a patient the patient is lost they become impatient the relatives become impatient and even if there is a you know there is a Uh, uh the journey of cure which has started the person will deviate towards other form of medicine that is modern medicine so this is what uh, i would like to tell through this presentation so now i think we uh, we will not take much time dr sheetal uh, uh, can start with her presentation ruju over to you thank you so much sir uh, so now we welcome dr sheetal jaisingh who has done diploma in nutrition and has held the satwa in both opd and ipd patient management so over to you dr sheetal uh before dr sheetal begins i would like to welcome uh, uh, arun shah sir he is my uh, uh, you can say mentor and godfather welcome sir and he he is a person with a engineering and a business background but he has got in depth 
knowledge of homeopathy and astrology and he is one of the person who is connecting uh, medicine with astrology so uh, he has invited me multiple time for different sessions to en- enrich me with this knowledge so welcome good morning to respected teachers i'll start with my presentation greetings to everyone on world homeopathy day uh, i'm dr sheetal jaisi and i'll start with my case it was a case of 60 year old female patient who was admitted to a hospital ipd shri mumba devi she was a known case of hypertension and hypothyroidism and she comes with a complaint of edema of the left foot so this is the photo of the patient and as seen here it is a zero sanguinous discharge which is which is seen and what here can be marked is pus pockets which are seen and erythema with purple discoloration so if anybody has come to the diagnosis with the uh, pictures can put in the diagnosis in the chat box further uh, we can see that on admission first thing we do is monitor the blood sugar and that was uh, 274 on admission then the patient was advised x ray of the foot to rule out bone involvement and to rule out basically whether it is osteomyelitis so we can see that there is no bone involvement in the x ray then the patient was advised to do cbc to see the extent of the disease and the total wbc count was 13200 and hba1c was done which was 5.5 so we understand that this is not chronic diabetes it was just a singular reading which has come high on admission then serum electrolytes was done which was normal because edema can occur due to uh, imbalance in the serum electrolytes also then uh, the patient was advised ur- uh, urine routine also to see whether there was elevation in urine glucose and there was no urine glucose present only 6 to 8 percent then the chief complaint as we have understood that it is a left foot edema with the discharging of zero sanguinous fluid what is to be marked here is burning throbbing pulsating pain with erythema and purple discoloration probably the patient had got feet wet uh and what is to be marked here is better by cold fermentation better by pressure and aggravated at night so has anyone uh, come to the diagnosis uh you you can put it in the chat box at mental level what is to be marked was hurriedness in her conduct and in her speech so that was the characteristic mental behavioral symptom so from the medicine point of view the diagnosis here is cellulitis which is a acute inflammatory condition of the skin characterized by erythema pain swelling and heat due to any type of injury associated with lymphangitis and fever our patient did not have lymphangitis and fever from jocelyn's manual of diabetes we'll understand that in clinical diabetes there is presence of blood glucose uh, elevation there is urine glucose there are symptoms and in preclinical diabetes there is sometimes urine glucose usually blood sugars are elevated and rarely the uh, symptoms are present but our patient did not have any urine glucose patient did not have any symptoms only the, the blood glucose was elevated so we understand that our patient lies at the level of latent diabetes mellitus so latent diabetes is basically elevation of blood glucose levels in times of stress such as pregnancy or during severe infection in our case it is due to severe infection which has led to increase in the sugar levels so what is the final diagnosis here it is infective cellulitis of the left foot with blister formation with latent diabetes and she is a known case of hypertension and hypothyroidism so if the patient is not treated at this point the patient can go into complications of necrotizing fasciitis or she can even further go to osteomyelitis from organ on and organ of not medicine point of view we will see the aphorisms wherein 
we see that this is a case of one sided disease because there is only one or two principal symptoms which are obscuring all the other symptoms so how do we treat such cases as per aphorism 177 we understand that whatever the patient is presenting with we form a totality of that and give what is the most homeopathically indicated remedy and here we also understand the concept of local maladies wherein it is not just the local part which is affected but the individual as a whole is affected because although the chief complaint here is of the left foot cellulitis but even the as a whole the person has having hgd levels which are high the wbc count is high so we understand that the whole person is involved whole organism is affected in this we we'll also understand from aphorism 186 the difference between primary and secondary surgical disease wherein primary surgical diseases are in injuries accruing to the body from without and treatment of such diseases is by surgery which requires mechanical aid as in fractures and dislocations and secondary surgical diseases are where injury or insult to the local tissue uh, which involves the whole living organism and it requires active dynamic aid to accomplish the work of healing which is in our case as we have seen that in this patient the whole organism is affected and it requires an active dynamic homeopathic aid so the classification of disease over here is dynamic acute individualistic disease sudden onset short duration with characteristic presentation secondary type of surgical disease with one sided presentation so now we come to the miasmatic diagnosis if anybody has come to the miasmatic diagnosis you can put in the chat box so here it is a tubercular miasm wherein there is hurriedness at mental and physical level there is rapid progress ailments from damp weather indolent system with hypertrophic changes hyperdynamic changeable response at physical level there is diabetic syndrome hyperactivity these patients are more vulnerable to infections giving rise to inflammation of serous membranes so now we will see the chart of evolution of the tubercular miasm what we have to mark over here is the soric hypersensitivity which leads to the uh, development of tubercular miasm rest of the points have been already spoken of so now you all will understand little bit about the uh, concept of latent sora wherein the acute diseases are the product of sora which has remained latent and this exacerbates when the circumstances are unfavorable to the body or the soul so we understand that this latent sora awakens which has been slumbering otherwise this reference is taken from chronic disease and aphorism 194 so we we'll try to correlate between latent sora and latent diabetes wherein both have the capacity to develop into full blown miasm and full blown uh, diabetes mellitus chronic disease under the circumstances when the circumstances are unfavorable to the body or if there are stressors like pregnancy or infection as it is in our case so the evaluation here is that it's a case of low susceptibility with few symptoms old age trivial exposure leading to infective cellulitis one sided presentation and paucity of symptoms so we will understand the approach here approach here would be as per modern medicine it would be incision and drainage with extensive debridement and antibiotics based on culture and sensitivity and homeopathic approach would be based on uh, symptom similarity and totality we give a single simple remedy so we are we have used the bovers approach to form the totality which includes causation pathological generals modalities mentals and sensations so we basically need a remedy which at the level of body has cellulitis purple discoloration beta by cold and hurriedness so the totality of symptoms which was repertorized was generals wet aggravation general cellulitis cold amelioration mind hurry haste tendency extremities burning 
and ex extremity pain burning and extremity pain pulsating so till now we have seen the uh, as per aphorism 3 we have seen the uh, diagnosis we have seen the organ on philosophy now we'll do the repertory sheet and on repertorization these were the remedies that were coming up so we have seen the medicine point of view we have seen the organ on we have seen the repertory sheet and now further we will go to remedy differentiation and our materia medica basically so we have to understand that here the remedy differentiation was done between arsenic tarantula cubensis lecasis and ledum pal all these remedies have the symptoms of cellulitis blue black purple discoloration is seen so how do we differentiate further is that arsenic alum is a right sided remedy it is aggravated from cold and better by heat so arsenic is ruled out at this point rest of the remedies have better by cold so finally how how do we differentiate the remedies here we differentiate on the basis of the mental symptoms wherein ledum pal has irritability anger dissatisfaction and arsenic has anguish restlessness lacases has insupportable anxiety so despite our patient having cellulitis and this condition she was not at all anxious she was just hurried in her presentation so tarantula has hurry and haste so the we basically need a remedy which at the pathological level has left foot cellulitis with purple discoloration burning stinging pain better by cold and at mental level hurriedness so this is a case of a physical complaint where there is cellulitis and your the mind acts as a concomitant it acts as a mental concomitant to the physical chief complaint so the remedy given was tarantula cubensis 200 first dilution every half hourly based on totality we will see little bit of references bogus synoptic key highlights that a uh, sphere of action as cellular tissue rapid onset sharp stinging pains hurriedness purple discoloration boric also uh, says that it has malignant suppuration purplish hue burning and stinging pains from repertory point of view we see that general cold amelioration tarantula is a five mark remedy and tarantula from fatak uh, highlight sept septic conditions puffed up feeling pungent burning and from rivers materia medica also we see that there is uh, rubrics such as blue green red colors hurry movements in from clark also we see that tarantula cubensis is a good remedy for painful abscesses ending by mortification means destruction of the integuments discharging thick sanius matter which means discharging of serum with pus and which has slightly bloody tinge so little bit of doctrine of signature we will see that the natural behavior of the spider is constant rhythmic motion and similar symptoms we can see in our homeopathic materia medica in form of hurriedness and restlessness and in toxicological symptoms we see similar symptoms of skin pain burning stinging type of pains so at this point if anybody has a uh uh confusion between tarantula hispanica and cubensis you can put it in the chat box we will understand the difference between hispanica and cubensis later so this is the day to follow when the patient was uh, better symptomatically hgt has come down to 175 on day 5 the patient is much better uh, edema is much better hgt has come down to 98 this is the photo of the patient and this is the hgt chart and we can clearly see that uh, the hgt has come down from 274 to 113 on the last day and we can see that there is gradual and improvement in the patient and improvement in the blood sugars also wbc count on uh, admission was 13200 and on day 4 it has come down to 10300 so we can clearly see that the patient is symptomatically better as well as on investigation patient is much better after treatment these are the photos of the uh, patient's foot 
So before going to the learning of the case, we will understand that tarantula hispanica uh, has action on the nerves and it uh, basically is a good remedy for chorea. And tarantula cubensis has action on the cellular tissue and it is a good remedy for abscesses, cellulitis, uh, such conditions. So that is the difference between the two. Learning from the case, we see that it's a uh, we understand the concept of latent diabetes, infective cellulitis. We have understood bogus totality, one-sided disease, how to prescribe in such one-sided diseases, uh, primary and secondary surgical diseases, tubercular myism, latent sora, selection of remedy with differentiation. These were some of the references that were used in the PPT. Uh, I'd like to thank Sattva for giving me this opportunity. Thank you to our mentor, Dr. Rakesh Sir, Sri Mumba Devi Homeopathic Hospital for giving us this opportunity and infrastructure. Thank you to our panelists, Dr. Kaninka, Dr. Vidya and Dr. Darul. Thank you to the audience for having the patience of listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sheetal, for such an insightful presentation. Now we open up the panel discussion. So over to Dr. Tarun. Hi, Sheetal. Hello, ma'am. How did it feel actually when you had taken this case? Uh, well, I must actually say that when this case comes in any junior's hand or maybe even in a well trained doctor's hand, the individual would first think of like sending the case to a surgeon. Uh, for a reference, actually, to get it diagnosed. So now there comes a point when you feel possibly you're not diagnosing it properly, uh, you don't want to get wrong, and just because you don't trust your instincts, or maybe because your clinical knowledge is not very good, you would send it to a surgeon, and then the surgeon would do the needful of incision and drainage because he's more convincing, and the patient goes out of your hand. Uh, glad to see that you had the confidence, along with Dr. Rakesh, to take up the case, and manage the case completely with homeopathy because primarily this happened because you were well versed with your own medical and surgical knowledge. And this is what exactly happens, uh, which I feel is what we all need to learn is, we, everyone needs to understand is that being uh, well versed with our homeopathic remedies is one thing and being also well versed with the medicine and surgical knowledge is one thing. You need to be having both together so that you know where and what is your scope and what is your limitation. There could have been a chance also that this case could have got infected, would have again led to osteomyelitis, so would have complicated. Uh, and therefore, possibly you ruled out diabetes is the individ uh, individual actually lurking in. Glad to see that you had a well-versed, well-rounded approach to ensure that you are fielding the patient and protecting the patient from all angles so that your treatment goes properly. I loved your methodical approach uh, and how you took the photos to show that cellulitis with the pus pockets actually subsided even in a latent diabetic individual while settling the uh, state uh, clinically, appearance-wise also, and even at the hyperglycemic status. We should have come to a very normal condition. I love the fact that this goes to prove that if we are well-versed with our own scope and limitation, along with homeopathy, uh, we can instill the faith in the patient's hands. Our patient. I loved it. And you have taken proof and good uh, support system from Organon Materia to prove your points likewise. I loved it. Best of luck. Thank you. Over to you, Ruchi. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. I request Dr. Kanika to give a views for the presentation. <clears throat> Dr. Kanika is disconnected. So uh, I will just read out the feedback, written feedback, which uh, Dr. Vidya had uh, sent it to us. So she has gone through both the cases we had given in advance to them so that they can read and give their uh, opinions. They, uh, she has said that there is a varied presentation of poor state of susceptibility. State of susceptibility is low enough so that the body uh, suffers from the clinical uh, disease. 
there is draining of resources in both the cases which is suggestive of tubercular myosin because of the sudden onset of symptoms the body gets tired and is unable to regain its resources and hence it requires a proper simulimum the necessity of making making a proper and accurate totality is important and if the valuable symptoms are undermined we can very easily be uh, 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 losing the common uh, uh, remedies which are emerging so uh, another thing which she said is using resources or the source books of materia medica is very important not just relying on repertory repertory is numerical match but materia medica will give you the qualitative symptoms the way sadhana uh, was able to dip, uh, describe the picture of asnik where there was a coverage of grief disappointment anger and anxiety this trio and this four symptoms which was uh, covered by asnik was actually written, written in the mental sections of clark similarly what sheetal was describing the approach to a one sided disease was very well reflected on various materia medica books especially boger had given a detailed understanding of this so boger synoptic key it has been seen as she is a teacher of materia medica dr vidya has seen that older books the clinical source books are covering the clinical history or the picture of the disease much more in uh, detail compared to the newer versions or newer uh, books which are there in the market so uh, she said that the overall presentation was very good and uh, she was uh, really happy to see how the surgical disease was uh, reversed with the help of proper homeopathic line of treatment so uh, this is what was dr vidya's feedback and uh, uh, my understanding uh, before we conclude i would like to thank each and every person who has participated dr sheetal dr sadna who uh, gave their valuable time and uh, their valuable learning and experience to this platform dr ruju to compel the entire event a uh, very 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 uh, uh, d- uh, thanks to my dear colleagues dr uh, tarul jadhav dr kanika sabrawal and dr vidya arunachalam they were all tied up because today is 10th april which is a very very auspicious day and there are multiple events which are happening all throughout the globe and in spite of that that uh, uh, the fact they were able to uh, take out time for this uh, event and i would like to thank all the audience all the audience who have been you know uh, patient and listening to the experience and the entire motive of this presentation was to ignite the fire of learning homeopathy and applying homeopathy in more and more uh, serious dimension of cases and changing the perspective of the of the uh, population or common man that you know homeopathy is just a, a, a science which is only to be taken along with allopathic line of treatment so if we go a proper referencing we can really uh, change the uh, change the confidence and faith which we have on the system and also transfer the same to the people who are uh, are relying on homeopathy or the common man i like to thank uh, 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 i think arpit had joined she he has joined from amravati you know he, he was one of my student who i had groomed in early days when i was uh, uh, growing as a professor and uh, yes. arun sir arun shah sir uh, a uh, very very uh, thank you to join your blessings are always required you are a great admirer and practitioner of homeopathy and uh, i think uh, to i should tell that you know uh, we should learn from sir i had gone visited his house he has more homeopathic books than us <laughs> he reads more homeopathy than us so that is what is uh, beautiful about uh, doc, uh, mr arun shah sir uh, dr himangi mishra himangi is one person she was always uh, in the formative years of uh, ipd when i had no help she would come up uh, sir i am there i'll take care of the patient so i am very thankful to himangi mishra and i am happy that she is now uh, established herself as an independent practitioner uh, deepali deepali has worked really hard during covid deepali smita smita is one of my dear student uh, she has joined dr ml davle Bashim Bashim is a youngster and I, I think he is going to rule Dharavi and Mai Meria very soon Furkan Furkan is one person who is dear to me and he is a very important part of uh, Satwa and uh, Karishma Karishma Raiba she is one of the silent uh, homeopathic practitioner and many more I think I am just seeing who else is there Mansi Mansi I I I am not confused with Mansi Kosrin yeah kosrin she she is uh, 
a person who has motivated so many patients to take homeopathy. Mohit, Mohit is our technical uh, expert. Sagar, Sagar has always helped me with all the the way you know the information is communicated to people around is because of the team uh, of Mohit Gupta, Sagar Kale, Yarish. Yarish is a very important person who has you know actually made this event. He's technically handling this entire event and he's recording it. So, Twinta, uh, Twinta, she has worked uh, very, very, very hard uh, and she is always a brilliant student and, and I think she is, you know, motivating more and more patients uh, for taking homeopathy and she is in regular touch with me. Zinal Thakkar, she is a silent uh, reader of homeopathy and she is uh, a person with great inclination about publication. Uh, Saili, Saili Shinde, she is a trump card. Uh, wherever there is uh, any clinical uh, thing which uh, I cannot reach, I, Sai is always available. And yes, of course, Yarish, Yarish is, uh, uh, has been closely working on IPD and homeopathy. And, and Nisha Bhatti, Bhatti, and she is, a, she is a very dear student to me. I think I have covered everyone. And Meenal, I think Meenal, I, how can I forget Meenal? Meenal, Meenal is one person... Who, is, who was the first person to approach uh, uh, and understand homeopathy and after that, you know, the entire uh, team of Mohit, Sagar and everyone has got involved in the entire process. She, she is uh, uh, sincerely working on, uh, uh, on uh, discussing more and more homeopathic cases. So thank you to everyone who has attended this event and I congratulate everyone. So if I have missed out anyone, I don't think so. Thanks a lot. So I will, uh, if there are any questions you can ask, we are going to end very soon. The meeting is going to end very soon. If there are any questions, please ask. Thank you, Dr. Rakesh. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. And uh, I would like to declare this also that Henceforth, Sato as a uh, as a unit would uh, like to conduct more and more uh, educational uh, uh, series or uh, or series or uh, presentations which are going to cover uh, different aspects of clinical practice. And the main agenda and motive is to strengthen the young people with uh, with all the required uh, resources so that they can independently independently practice or they can launch themselves as independent practitioners. So we are in the process of doing it and we will do, we will soon uh, inform everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone.